Hi, and welcome to this video on geometric sequences, brought to you by the Answer Series. Pause the video and process this in your own time. This is simply a refresher of everything we have done so far. Example one, we have three terms given and three very important straightforward questions. Pause the video, try them on your own, and then I will go through them with you. In question 1.1, we need to justify the type of sequence. To do that, we need to be observant. Notice that there is not a common difference. So if we divide the terms, 6 divided by 2, we get 3. And again, term 3 divided by term 2, we get 3. So we have a geometric sequence with a ratio of 3, and we have justified our answer. The next two terms in the sequence, we simply multiply 18 by 3 to get 54, and again we multiply 54 by 3 to get 162. Now we have the value of a term given, and we need to work out the value of n, the position of the term. So we equate the general formula, which we first have to work out. We know that the first term of the sequence is 2. We have worked out that the ratio is 3, so we can put that formula together very easily and we equate that to the outcome that we want. Dividing through by 2 gives us the result of 6,561. Now we need to be able to calculate the exponent that is needed, and there are three methods. One, use your calculator and guess. Not the best method, but it can work under pressure. Two, your calculators are programmed to work out the prime factors of a number. That works well in a simple example. The most efficient method with the most general application would be to use logs. So if you use your log function, which is on the right near the top, you simply put the base in and the value in and the calculator will give you this outcome of eight. You solve the equation and now you know that the ninth term has a value of 13,122. Pause the video. Try this example on your own, and then I will go through it with you. We have the first three terms given, but we have an unknown of x, and we know that the sequence is geometric. So we apply the definition, divide the second term by the first, and equate that to the third term divided by the second. If you work carefully, you will get x equal to plus or minus 6. The reminder is very important. Because we are squaring, we are looking for two answers. Remember that if you square minus 3, you get plus 9, and if you square plus 3, you still get plus 9. Don't forget that. In question 2.2, they've asked us to create a general term if the ratio is negative. So the first thing we have to do is establish a sequence with that negative ratio. So taking the two values that we worked out for x, if we substitute x equal to negative 6, we actually end up with plus 6. So this doesn't work for us because we need a negative ratio, but we have a positive ratio. So we start again, substitute in x equal to 6, and because of the negative coefficient, we will get the negative result we're looking for. And now we have a ratio of minus 2 thirds. So going into the formula, we simply replace the a value with the first term, which is 9, and the r value with the minus 2 thirds that we have worked out, and now we have generated a formula for Tn. Remember that the index is always one less than the position of the term. In question 2.3, we want the 12th term, but you need to concentrate. We are not working with the same ratio, now we are working with a positive ratio, so it's quick to adapt the formula. Simply rewrite what you did earlier, but replace the negative two-thirds with plus two-thirds because we are working with r greater than zero. You simply replace the n with 12, which will give you a result of 11, and you type that into your calculator, and your answer will be 2,048 over 19,683. Pause the video and try this question on your own. It's always a little worrying when you have two unknowns and you want to try to avoid complications. So in a similar way to what we did a while back with arithmetic sequences, 
we're going to go to the definition and remind ourselves that the first four terms can be written up with only two unknowns. And so if we substitute the first term as we were given equal to seven, we can then generate the fourth term by just using one unknown. So AR cubed is equal to 56. Dividing both sides by seven will give us R cubed equal to eight and then R equal to two. Now we need to generate both the X and the Y values. So going back to where we started, we're simply going to work out AR, which means we're going to multiply seven by two to get 14. And then we're going to go one more time and work out AR squared by multiplying that answer by yet another two. So our X and Y values are 14 and 28. Now we need to work out with the same sequence, the 15th term. We have a formula very easily worked out because we know those values from question 3.1. So we substitute the first term and the ratio. We go to our calculator using 14 because we have an index always one less than the position of the term and we get a rather large answer. Pause the video, try question four on your own, and then I will work through it with you. In order to determine the first term and the common ratio, possibly two answers for both, we need to make use of the information given. So we've got the fifth term of a geometric sequence equal to 162, and the third term equal to 72. It isn't very helpful if you just write T5 equal to 162, make the effort not only to say that, but to use the link between T5, AR to the 4, and 162. So what we're going to do here is say that our fifth term is AR to the 4, which is 162, and our third term is AR squared, which is 72. With terms in a geometric sequence, it's extremely helpful to remember that if you divide, you will find that A cancels. So dividing AR to the 4 by AR squared gives us a very useful result of R squared. Dividing 162 by 72 gives us 9 over 4. So we know that R is equal to plus or minus 3 over 2. Do not forget that when R squared is equal to 9 over 4, we need to take plus or minus the square root of that value because of the square. All right, now we have two R values. Because we're squaring to work out the third term, it won't make any difference if we use the negative three over two or the positive three over two. We will in fact, both times, get the same A value of 32. So both sequences will start with a positive A value of 32, but we can generate one sequence with a positive ratio and one sequence with a negative ratio. So in 4.2, when we are asked to list the three terms of the sequences, I'm going to start with R being positive, and I'm stating that so somebody else can follow. My first term is 32, and because my ratio is positive, all my terms will remain positive. I simply multiply through by 3 over 2 each time. When, on the other hand, I have a negative ratio, my terms will alternate between positive and negative. So I start with A equal to 32, multiply by negative 3 over 2, changes the middle term to a negative 48, Multiply again by negative 3 over 2, and the third term is 72. So we have two different sequences because we have two different ratios. Pause the video and try this question on your own. We have three terms given, so it's very easy by inspection to see that your R value here is going to be one third. We have the value of the last term, and what we need to do is work out how many terms we have. So we're going to start by generating a formula. The first term is one, so our ratio becomes everything. So we just have a ratio to the power of n minus one and one over 729. So choosing the correct log function, you simply type in the base of the log and the number that you are taking the log of, and that will give you a result of six. So if n minus 1 equals 6, then n equals 7, and that tells us that t7 has a value of 1 over 729. Example 6 is a popular way of asking the question. It relies heavily on algebra. Pause the video and try the question on your own. 
We have three terms given, and we are going to go back to the basics. If we take the second term and divide by the first term, we get the common ratio. If we repeat that process, but take the third term and the second term and divide those terms, we get the common ratio again. So we can set up an equation and solve that equation. We get a trinomial, we factorize or use the quadratic formula, and we get two values of x. Read the question carefully. If they're asking you to find x, then I've completed the question and I need to do no more work. However, they are asking us to find the common ratio. So in this question, we have to continue because we haven't actually answered the question yet. So if we take x equal to minus 1 and generate the sequence by replacing the x values with minus 1, the sequence we get will be minus 1, 2, minus 4. And from there, we can work out that our ratio is minus 2. Now we we'll have to go back a second time, take our second value of x, generate the terms that that produces, and then we have to divide the second term by the first term in order to work out that the ratio is 5 over 3. So make sure you answer the question fully. In question 6.2, we need to, focusing on a negative ratio, determine the general term of the sequence. So we already know that the sequence generated by negative 2, r equals negative 2, is going to be minus 1, 2, minus 4. The a value is minus 1, the r value is minus 2, and so we can put that together very easily. Do not be tempted to multiply those negatives together. It will cause a breakdown and your answer will be completely wrong. In question 6.3, we are using this time a positive ratio result and we are determining the value of the 11th term. So we're going to use the a value of this particular sequence, which is 9 over 2. We're going to use the ratio of 5 over 3. And we know that the index that we work with will always be one less than the position of the term that we are working with. Substitute all of that into your calculator, and your answer will be 744,22. Thank you for watching this video, brought to you by the Answer Series. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.